Giuseppe Rosano, I'm a consultant cardiologist at St. George's Hospital in London, also visiting professor at St. George's Hospital and Univ Medical School in London. I will be talking about uh, uh, estrogens and microvascular angina, uh, possible treatments of uh, microvascular angina, and uh, new therapeutic opportunities in heart failure. Yes, um, estrogen, I mean, uh, estrogens are very important in women and they're important throughout the, their life. And uh, what is important is the balance between estrogen and progestin. After menopause, there is a, a drop in uh, estrogen levels and estrogens are natural occurring calcium antagonists. So basically, after the menopause, there is a loss of the vasodilating effect of estrogens. And this goes, of course, uh, an increase in blood pressure on one side, on the other side, an increase in vascular resistances. But on the other hand, estrogens have uh, at least 300 different actions at the genome level that influence uh, uh, activities like uh, the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, the release of uh, um, uh, uh, natriuretic peptides, uh, the release of vasoconstricting uh, vaso constricting factors, and therefore uh, all the changes that occur after the menopause, they all together uh, um, coexist in causing the, um, an increase in vasomotor tone. Now, this increase in vasomotor tone, this increase in vasoconstriction, causes an increased risk or increased prevalence of uh, microvascular angina. And uh, part of the uh, changes that are occurring with uh, estrogens are uh, evident in some women before the menopause. So, say women with uh, a cataminial migraine, so migraine that occurs during before me the menstrual cycle or the mid cycle. I mean, these are women that are more prone to develop the vaso vasomotor, vasomotor changes uh, with uh, the drop of estrogens. Regarding, uh, uh, so, so as I said, the mechanism is not just uh, related to one single factor. So there are several factors that are affected by estrogens. Uh, regarding possible treatments, uh, we've been shown, uh, we've shown long time ago that uh, uh, estrogen replacement therapy in uh, women is effective in improving symptoms and exercise capacity in women with microvascular angina. What is important with uh, hormone replacement therapy is that, that uh, it is started early after the menopause, uh, because if it started too late, uh, it may be harmful, but if it started early after the menopause, may uh, confer some benefit. And in those women with uh, angina or microvascular angina, uh, may, uh, may give a significant symptomatic benefit. Regarding heart failure, it's, um, we have uh, two different uh, phases of the coin. Uh, on one side, we have acute heart failure, where we don't have any new treatment that has been shown to be effective for the past 15 years. And so we're still looking for effective treatments that may be effective in the acute phase. Uh, but in patients that survive the acute phase, patients that become chronic, then in, in these patients we have, uh, for, uh, we, have, uh, we have several drugs that have been proven effective uh, in the past 20 years, like ACE inhibitors and beta blockers and uh, minor corticoid receptor antagonists. Now, with these three class of drugs are extremely effective in uh, reducing mortality and morbidity. <coughs> After these three drugs are implemented, then in patients with sinus rhythm, uh, ivabradin is a drug that is uh, effective in reducing the composite endpoint of mortality and morbidity. So it's a drug that should, must be considered in uh, all patients who are, not, who are still symptomatic despite treatment. There's a new treatment that just uh, uh, came uh, uh, on uh, uh, and has been shown to be effective. That is the uh, combination of valsartan and uh, sacubitril. This is uh, a new molecule. Basically, they took two molecules and they bound them together in uh, one chemical entity. So in, uh, uh, in theory, I mean, there are two different drugs, but they've been put in one single uh, molecule. 
And uh, this combination has been shown to be effective in reducing mortality and morbidity in patients with uh, a chronic heart failure with uh, increased levels of natriuretic peptides or, or who are still symptomatic after uh, maximal therapy with uh, background therapy. And this effect, uh, this, the effect of uh, valsartan secubutril uh, or LCZ696 is, uh, was more significant than that that was achieved with a suboptimal dose of uh, enalapril, uh, an ACE inhibitor. So uh, that is, uh, this is a very promising drug. What is important for valsartan secubutril is to understand uh, in which patients it uh, can be used safely uh, because, of course, the design of the study uh, identified a very specific patient population, uh, which patient can, be, can tolerate uh, the drug that may induce hypotension. Uh, but once these uh, two main uh, um, problems will be solved, I think that, that will be a very important drug that will uh, further improve uh, the benefits of uh, the treatments that we have in uh, our failure. Now, together with drugs, then we have devices, and we are learning that uh, uh, resynchronization, resynchronization therapy is uh, extremely effective. Uh, implantable uh, cardioverter devices are extremely effective. Now, there are new uh, the therapies, uh, new trials testing the effect of mitral clip that uh, basically repairs the dysfunctional mitral valve that probably uh, uh, that I mean uh, should uh, uh, give us results uh, soon and uh, uh, that if proven positive then uh, uh, could be uh, suggested as a uh, clinical uh, as for clinical indication.